Are you feeling trapped in your relationship? Or maybe you bought something only because you felt pressured to? This may be key indicators that you're falling victim to psychological manipulation. Welcome back, Cycles. Today, we'll be discussing seven key signs that someone is psychologically manipulating you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. All right, let's get into it. Number one, the manipulation and overuse of facts. According to the pristine blog Psychology Today, psychological manipulation can be defined as an exercise of unwanted influence through mental distortion and emotional exploitation, with the main intention to seize power, control, benefits and or privileges at the victim's expense. Now, this manipulation tactic, referred to as intellectual bullying, is a common tactic used among manipulators. Manipulators all have different styles of this tactic. Some of the common ones include lying, excuse making, misinformation of the truth, exaggeration, understating, and being biased of an issue or topic. According to an article released by Time magazine, psychological manipulation is made up of three components – fear, obligation and guilt. During a heated conversation, a manipulator will use these three components to their advantage, usually by lying to and overwhelming the other individual. Even something like changing facts in the slightest way is a common tactic used to make the manipulator seem right and you seem wrong. Which is the manipulator's main goal? The manipulator may also bombard you with facts to make them seem like they are the expert in a topic that they are sure you know nothing about. Some people may use this technique to be malicious. Others use this technique solely for intellectual superiority. This tactic is most common in sales and financial situations or professional discussions and negotiations. Ensure you don't feed into this intellectual bullying by brushing up on facts presented and stick to the main discussion. Number two, they give you little to no time to decide or reply. Have you ever been stuck in a sticky sales pitch? If not, you're lucky. This manipulation strategy is mostly seen in sales and negotiation as well as relationships. We as humans are wired to FOMO, fear of missing out. This tactic plays on this natural tendency by making us think that we're going to miss out on something crucial. Whether it be the really great price the salesman is pitching or a promising future with your manipulative spouse, you'll be put on the spot to make a quick decision that will ensure you will not miss out. By giving the receiver little to no time to make a decision, the manipulator has the upper hand. By adding the tension and control to the pitch or discussion, it is hoped that you will crack under pressure and give in to the oppressor's pitch or demands. And unfortunately, in the business world, this tactic really works. So ensure you stand your ground and keep in mind that these offers are not exactly the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity they're cut out to be. Number three, negative humor and sarcasm. Wow, you changed your hair. Red. Eh. Whether you take these remarks as a compliment or shots to your character is a limbo. But one thing you know for sure is that you can tell that the delivery was far from genuine. Does this sound familiar? Negative humour and sarcasm are discussed as light-hearted jokes or playful teasing. The manipulator's main goal in mind is to make the victim feel less secure and inferior. If you've ever been the victim of this type of situation, you know that it works. The remarks can be about really anything. It could be pertaining to something as simple as the old model of your smartphone, your career and credentials, or something more sensitive like your appearance. By keeping the remarks on the fine line between rude and friendly, the manipulator puts the victim in a very tough position of not being able to take the remarks seriously. And if the victim challenges the manipulator or withdraws after the remark, it will all be about how the victim can't take a joke. In these situations, it's best to laugh it off and know that these types of passive-aggressive remarks stem from the manipulator's own insecurities about themselves. 
Number four, location advantage. Have you ever been called into the office as a kid or asked to stay after work to talk to the boss? If so, then you know the unbearable feeling and thought of, oh no, what did I do? Well, that is the exact emotion they try to enlist. One-on-one conversations can be intimidating, especially if the topic of conversation is a touchy subject. Being asked by your boss or spouse to talk in another room can be a simple act of wanting privacy about the situation that is no one else's business. On the other hand, if this person uses the private location to have the upper hand, they are manipulating you. Location advantage is a term used to describe a manipulator's insisting on meeting or interacting in a physical place where they can express more dominance and control. This location can be anywhere from the manipulator's office, car, home or other spaces where they feel ownership and comfortability, and somewhere you lack these things. So, if you ever feel threatened or like you won't be able to think straight in a location the manipulator insisted on, be sure to stand your ground and suggest a different location. And if that's not possible, be sure to stay confident and know that your manipulator knows exactly what they're doing. Number 5. Guilt Tripping Pack your bags kids, we're going on a guilt trip. We've all been guilty of this at one point or another, and it doesn't necessarily mean we are all considered to be manipulators. However, if this tactic is used to wiggle their way through life, you may need to reevaluate if you're manipulating or being manipulated by others. The act of guilting someone into completing an action is all based on the targeting of the victim's weaknesses, insecurities and soft spots. By targeting a victim's wired human sense of caring, nurturing and love, the manipulator will use the vulnerability they've created in the victim to have unreasonable requests and demands completed. If the manipulator has known you for a while, this tactic can become dangerous because they know exactly how to crack you. They will use sensitive personal views that you have from past experiences to benefit their request. If the manipulator doesn't know you that well, they will play on average human views and common sense to have their wish fulfilled. Either way, if you are being guilt-tripped into making a decision or completing a task on behalf of someone else, ask the manipulator, what would you do in this situation? It will throw them off guard and not immediately give them what they want. A manipulator's favourite victim are the ones that don't challenge them or stick up for themselves. Alright Psychos, that wraps up today's video. Let us know in the comments below if you have a manipulator in your life. Also, make sure to like and share this video with your friends and also subscribe to the channel for more Psycho videos. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video.